Last time I was here last year, mm -hmm. I, uh, I was very, very thin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't remember if it was you. Mm -hmm. I, I lost a lot of memory also. Oh, you um, did? Yeah. And uh, I was so thin that you guys had to use a couple of blankets mm -hmm. to put on my, on my uh, like right beside my thighs mm -hmm. to make it seem like I had more, more, more machine. Tissue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, that was interesting. Yep. Yeah, I was the one who did it last yes. time. So let's see what you are today. You can step right up and look up straight ahead. We're going to do the height at the same time. So did you get a transplant? I did. I got a heart and a awesome. liver. Awesome. You can step up. You got a heart and a liver. And, a liver. and they did them both. Both at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I remember that. Oh my God, yeah. Oh my God. It's great to be I've back. Never that is just amazing. It's just it amazing is. to me what they can do. Oh my God, it is. And then you did it where? Where'd you have all this? Um, Cedar Sinai in LA. In LA. Yes. Awesome. Uh, I last uh, well when I got there, it was bad. <laughs> Physically, yeah, I was. I was. You were on the. I was down to my last quarter, I guess. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I made it right in time. I spent about three and a half months there, oh, waiting for the heart and liver, but finally came through. Yes. Oh, so you were there and oh, yeah. they weren't ready yet. No, no, I had to. I, I, I had to be hospitalized. I, I, I was, were, I was dead. You much. were just on yes. those. Yeah. I was wow. on the verge of death. So yeah, they, 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 they I, I think it, it made sense to me when I was maybe two weeks into the hospitalization. Uh -huh. um, the reason why I had to be there because um, it didn't make sense to me, you know. I, uh -huh. I, I felt okay, then again I was dying, but you know, you get used to everything and anything. Oh, yeah. So, so when I got there, I said, oh, this is a waste of time, I should be home, you know, spending time with the family. Mm -hmm. But then as days progressed and then days went by, it kind of started to make sense to me, because when you're in the hospital, in my situation, I wasn't eating anymore, because of the, my fluid retention was really bad because mm -hmm. of the, the, the liver. All the ascites, yeah. It was horrible. So I wasn't eating anymore. I had no appetite, first of all, but then I couldn't eat because of the fluid retention mm -hmm. of the ascites. And then once I got to the hospital, they put me into the, the you know, the, the, uh, the swan gas catheter uh -huh. that directly goes into your heart, all the medication and everything. And I started to feel a little bit better and better and better, little by little, little by little. And then it made sense to me. I had to be in the hospital for me to get a little better, better enough to be able to receive the, the, the heart and the liver. Because the way I was going at home, I, I, I wasn't getting any better. Quite the opposite. So, so it made sense to me. I said, okay, I have to enjoy this now because <laughs> I'm feeling a lot better. So by the time when the time comes, I'll, I'll be able to handle the heart and liver transplant. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I did. I, 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 I gained a lot of weight, muscle weight, because I had lost a lot. And uh, I was feeling a lot better when, when the heart and liver came through. So so even after that, when I, when I received them, uh, I think I lost about 15 pounds. So the the way that I when I when I went into the hospital, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to 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 hold on to dear life when I got to the liver the way that I was going. You know, so it made sense to be there for a, a, at least three months. They knew that. The, well, they did. I didn't. You didn't. <laughs> it didn't make sense it to me. You know? Exactly. Yeah. It, it kind of like wakes you up when you're there and you're like, ah, oh, this makes sense. How long did it take you to start feeling better once you were up there? Did it take I think a it week? Was, it was, weeks no, or no, a month? No, it was, it was about four weeks. Four weeks. Four weeks. I wasn't walking anymore. Like, uh -huh. I couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. So so I had my little cart and everything. So mm -hmm. by week two, I started to feel a little better where they would let me get up by myself to go to the bathroom again. Mm -hmm. Tiny little room, you know, I see you. Uh, so I was, of course, the nurse was with me all the time, but I was able to, to get up because at that point they would just bathe me and everything. So I, 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 just, I just didn't have the strength for anything. Oh, yeah. So little by little, they let, they let me walk um, to the bathroom and then back. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to uh, get up and sit on a tiny little chair right beside the, uh, the, the bed. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped using the commode and I could go to the, to the restroom. Not by myself, I had to let them know, and then they came in. Uh, week three, they kind of started letting me go by myself, mm -hmm. where I would just let them know, you know, I'm going to the restroom just in case you <laughs> hear me fall or something. So I would go. And then at around four weeks, I took my first steps out of the uh, room. The room? Yeah, little by little, I walked. Mm -hmm. And I said, huh. So about week four, 
uh, after walking, you know, a little bit in, in, in the hallway, mm -hmm. I said, let's do a whole, what they do is they, they, once you're in there, they don't let you get, go out because they don't, because you're in, I, I was an anti rejection medication and all that. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want me to get any oh, you know, yeah. sickness or anything out there. Yeah. So they said, you can only walk around here. So I did a lap around the, 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 the area where I was at, mm -hmm. which is the cardiac care unit. Um, I remember when I was walking back to the room, I started to cry. Ooh. I was so happy because it, 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 it had been at least, I don't know, 13 years of me not being able to walk and not feeling like I was gonna die. Mm -hmm. Because of the medication, of course. Yeah. It was the medication, but. Uh, uh, How was but your breathing? It was great, it was wow. great. But it was the medication, I knew that. Mm -hmm. But it, it felt amazing to be able to feel like the little breeze that you get in your mm -hmm. face when you're walking, and you take you take for we granted. Take for granted all we do. Out. And I came back, and I, I I was crying. I was I was so blessed and so thankful to to. And then your your mind starts to wander. You're you're thinking to yourself, wow, I wonder how it's gonna happen, how it's gonna feel when I get my new heart. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be amazing, and it truly is. <laughs> wow. Mind you, this is my second heart transplant, so so and first liver. Mm -hmm. But you get so used to feeling tired all the time again that you don't remember what it feels like to, to feel that That's breeze. your normal. That's your yeah. normal again. It's, it's like, mm. yeah. I mean, I'm walking, but mm. am I really walking? Yeah. <laughs> I'm living. Am I really alive, you know? Yeah. But you get used to everything. So once you start walking again, oh, it's wonderful. My, uh, my foot, uh, I, I had foot drop after the uh, surgery. Well, my uh, nerve here on the side mm -hmm. was damaged. Still is. Um, Every now and then when I'm tired of walking, it kind of like wobbles to the side. You don't but have I, to wear a brace or anything? I, I, stopped, I stopped wearing it because oh, my, no. my theory behind it was the more I use it, the more I'm not going to use it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so I started to exercise myself, forced, forcing the foot again, 24 hours a day sometimes. Just you. moving the foot, moving the foot. And they said it might not come back, and it, it has come back, so to the point where I can walk with no braces and move it around. That's but every now and then I, I kind of forget. Because mm -hmm. I don't have any strength to the side, mm -hmm. so if I want to push something to the side, it's it's really hard for me. But um, but even with that, when I was walking after the heart, the heart and liver transplants, I was I was I was thankful. I said I figured in my head, you know, I'll take a dumb foot any day <laughs> compared to what I had before. Mm -hmm. So so even with this, walking is a blessing. It truly is. Every now and then when I'm tired, I use my cane again because mm -hmm. I, I don't want to fall you over. You don't want to fall down. Exactly, but it, it's only from when I walk too much. Which but you know when you're getting to that yes, point, Yes, yes, right? and I feel it, I feel yeah. it. Like, it's like, oh, okay, I, I need to, like, some mm -hmm. help. But it's wonderful. It's wonderful to be back and oh see and see all of this and all of you guys in a different light, you know? Because oh, wow. when you're thinking of, I might not make it, Life seems different, and you want to, you want to live. You really want to take advantage of every moment, but times sometimes you just can't because physically you can't. You're not there. Yeah, yeah. And now it's amazing. <clears throat> I have a, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I have an eight eight year old daughter. So she was born as a miracle. She truly was, mm -hmm. and she 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 only <clears throat> met a, a father who was tired all the time, who was sick all the time, who was in the hospital all the time. So now. I don't think she recognizes me. <laughs> she recognizes me anymore. She's she's weirded out sometimes. When I tell her, "Okay, let's go out walking," she's like, "What? What do you mean? <laughs> let's go! Come on!" The other day, I was able to to pick her up. She's eight years old. She's really tall, and uh, and I picked her up, and she she looked at me. She was amazed. Daddy, can you do it? I said, "Yeah, I can do it now." Like, tiny little things that we take for granted, mm -hmm. like picking up your child. Like, people do it all the time. They just figured, oh, it's a thing, you know? We all do it. Well, we don't think we don't. any different because and we, we don't just think any do. Other. Yeah. Exactly. We just do. Mm -hmm. Like, we just walk. Mm -hmm. We just breathe. We just, mm -hmm. and, and when, when, when that, like, gets taken away from you, mm -hmm. uh, and, then you and then you get it back, it's wonderful. Like, it's like so that. It's emotional. Gosh, it, it, it truly just... is. Like, every day is emotional. But you have to be awake. Because I remember my first heart transplant, I, I, <coughs> when I started feeling ill again, you stop being thankful. Like, do you start feeling like why me or well, not, am not I ever gonna that. feel better again? Exactly, because because 
I think, I think we're always thinking about the past. You know, we're always thinking about how it used to be, how it was great before. And that's with age and with kids and everything. You know, oh, I remember when the, when the house was full of kids and it was wonderful. Well, yeah, but now enjoy your life the way it is now. But it's hard for us humans to stop, to, to, to live in the present. Mm -hmm. We're always living in the past or sometimes in the future. Well, we live in the future only because of the past. Exactly. That's the thing. Which makes no sense at all. Exactly. Because you can make those changes. In yes. Here. But it's in here, and it's really hard because this this can be your worst enemy. That's your control. Exactly. Yeah. So so now now I understand that what 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 affected me the most most of my life is that I never was in the present. I was oh. never living in the present moment. I was always thinking of the past, maybe imagining the future, and I was I was never enjoying the present. Now I live in the present. Now I'm here, like I'm, I'm here now with you, mm -hmm. and I am enjoying this now here with you mm -hmm. because I it's it, I, I feed off of you. you yeah, know? and you're not thinking, oh my God, when am I going to be out of exactly. this test? And now I got all these things. To exactly. Do and blah 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 blah. Yes. Yeah. I'll get to them when I get to them. Very and the the past might have been great. But it's it's past. The past is the past. <laughs> exactly, it already yeah. passed. It passed. So yeah, you're gonna been... change it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, you enjoyed it, and, and if you didn't, too bad for you. But but it's gone. You're right. Too bad for you. Exactly. But, so but you see, make your thing. memory every day. You exactly. make your memory. But but see, something. the only and I, I always tell people this. I I would love to have a syringe where I would just like <laughs> like take it off from me, like like. Pull it out of me, the feeling that I have every day, and inject it in you. But I can't. Oh. I can't. I can't do that. So, so the only thing I try to do is tell people about how I feel. You know, like mm. embrace the feeling that you have this moment. Enjoy your job. A lot of people don't enjoy their their jobs. They just figure it's the job. You know, it's something I do to feed myself or to feed my family. A lot of people at this moment are looking for a job. Your job. They would love to have your job. And we don't take that, and, and, and to get, you know, we take it for granted again. Yeah. We don't think get that feeling. They yes. go to sleep at night. Yes. And wake up in the morning feeling that they have something to and live for. And you can see it in their eyes. Mm -hmm. Like when you come forth, like, I don't know, for one of these people that are working. And you can see the difference. Like in the people that are here just to make a living. Mm -hmm. People who are grateful that they have this. You can see it in your eyes, you know? So so that's wonderful too. Like having a car, we take it for granted. A lot of people don't have a car. It takes them two hours to get to work. Oh, well, you got that you know? right. Yeah, yeah and, and, and yeah. for us it's like 15 minutes. Let's go there. We're happy, you know? But, and then and then we have the other people that they're walking and they're like, ah, I have to walk again. A lot of people wish they had, you know, oh, yeah. legs, <laughs> period. And we take it for granted again. So you and I are a miracle. It's a miracle that we woke up today. We're just miracles and we forget it. It's a miracle that we're breathing. It's a miracle that we're, that we have eyesight. Mm -hmm. That we have, we, we're able to speak. You know, it's, it's it just can be taken away in a flash. Like that. We're so brittle, you know, as humans. Mm -hmm. If somebody chokes you right now, you're dead and that's it. <laughs> if you fall, you break. Mm -hmm. That's how brittle we are. We are a miracle. The fact that you woke up, the fact that you got here to the, to, to work and not the had an accident. The fact that I saw the sunrise this morning. It was so beautiful. Did you catch the sunrise? Did. did you get up early? I did. Ah. Your, your relationship with the Lord, with God, has to go beyond a building. You know? Because God is in here right now with us. Mm -hmm. It's in you. Mm -hmm. It's in the tree. It's, in, it's everywhere. It's just everywhere. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Don't even worry about where you're going after this. Make the best of this this day today. Mm -hmm. You know, touch people's lives today. today. Make them better today. The way I see it now is you have to be a good person just because you have to be a good person, not because mm -hmm. you're worried about where you're going after this. This is just school, you, you know? It. This is just school for what's for the university that's mm -hmm. to come, you know, up there. But it's not like heaven that, that like they like they show us in the Yeah, books, it's not you know? and I just think it's the energy that Exactly. Is, is what it is. I mean, you can. There's people that set off really negative, bad vibes and energy. Yes. And then they and go to church on Sundays. And they go to church. <laughs> <laughs> then we all know them, right? About that. We yeah, but I was them. just talking to someone, and yes. that's and that's why it's a turnoff. Religion is for some it is, people. It is. 
because but then I'll tell you this if at all and, and I don't know if you agree with this but I was talking to somebody the other day is I, I was telling them about you know life and stuff and I told them because I, I was going to give a talk that day mm -hmm. and uh, my wife asked me what are you going to wear and I said mm -hmm. it really doesn't matter and she said you should wear this yellow sweater and I said no it's too bright I said but it looks good on you and I said yes but it defeats the purpose, I said. And she says, what do you mean? Well, I am not the important thing in that speech. Oh, that would have stood talk. out. Yes. Yeah. The message is what's important. Mm -hmm. The message that I received, the mm -hmm. message that I receive on a daily basis, and that I have to give to people, you know, that I have mm -hmm. to put out there. And she, she just looked at me like awestruck. And like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, whatever, she said. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I was talking to somebody at the, uh, at the end of the day. And I told them, see, that's the problem with religion, and especially with Catholicism. Because people say, well, yeah, but, but priests are full of uh, you know, mistakes and, and, and errors, and, and, and they're humans, and some of them. That's the problem right there. Mm -hmm. See, you're thinking of the person. You're not mm -hmm. thinking of the message. I'm not important anymore. My life story is what's important. My message is what's important. I'm not important anymore. Imagine if I'm not here. I could be black, Asian, white, whatever. We're a mixture of all. It's not important. <laughs> it's not. It's not important. It's what I have to say. My life has to be the message now. And people don't understand that. Mm -hmm. We just we just look at the human, you know? And the human can be full of mistakes, aren't we all? But that's not the point. Listen to the message. And everybody has a message. We just don't listen with the heart and our ears and our eyes and, and our mind open anymore. We're just not open to anything. And we should be, you know? And that's the thing. We're not open anymore. We need to listen to the message. And the message is everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. It's in nature. Yeah, it's just how, you know, there's, you, you're, the kids, you have an eight-year-old? Yes. Have, eight. Just one, one child? One, one. Yeah, and it's the kids, they are so innocent growing up mm -hmm. and they understand that mm -hmm. they're listening and learning yes. on a daily basis no one has to really tell them exactly. they're picking up on everything because they're connected it. yeah and they then are. they start losing it i don't know if it's when they go to school and when they have their outside influences i think it is i and think it is so my wife uh, was worried the other day two days ago or so because she said as the, as she was going to sleep she was in her room and she started asking her She's, she, my daughter started asking her mom. Mm -hmm. She said, "Mom, I don't want to die yet." And she said, "What do you mean? What do you mean?" Well, I, I think I still have a lot of things to do. And then my wife, she, was, she got really scared, you know. Mm -hmm. But what do you say you, you're going to die? Well, I, I mean, everybody dies. She said, "But I don't want. I just don't want to die yet. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I have a lot of things to do." And I think it, it comes back to what you just said. And they're connected somehow mm -hmm. to to bigger things than just worrying about the mortgage and the car payment mm -hmm. and and, uh, and I don't know the, the, the birthday party that you have with your uh, co-worker next weekend. You know, mm -hmm. they're just living life and they just catch the message and they're thinking about more profound things than we are and we think we're the adults here, you know, and we think that we're the ones that have it here. Mm -hmm. We're so wrong. We are. No, and we have to listen to them. See, and we're so we're so used to, a, to 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 thinking about it this way. The teacher has to be older than us, uh, and it's not it's not that way. I learned so much about life overall from my daughter in tiny little penny words, you know, because we're always thinking of the teacher has to speak profoundly and the words have to come from God and you know they have to be like so, you no know, so big, mm -hmm. but they're not. They're not. I received this message when I was uh, when I was hospitalized right after the, the, the heart and liver transplant. I, I truly believe in angels and all of that. And, and mm -hmm. uh, people came in my aid, and I could see them. And uh, when I spoke to people that are in the know, they said, uh, "You were chosen." And I said, "Well, I mean, well, why me? I mean, we're all chosen, but then we we never." We, we can't hear the message, you know? And sometimes we're, you're put in that position where you're in life and death. You're right in the middle that you could see things. 
Most of us can't. A lot of people are just born with the, with the gift. But I, I wasn't. So when I started seeing things like that, I said, mm, this, I'm going crazy. <laughs> I'm going crazy. And, and, and they said, no, you're not. You were chosen. And I said, how do you mean? See, you speak in, 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 in a way that can be understand, understood by everybody, they said. So now you have to give the message. I said, oh, that kind of makes sense to me. Because all of my life, I, I've been looking for the message from people that can speak. You oh. Know? Mm -hmm. Have big words for everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we, laymen, don't and understand that. And then you that. want to emulate, probably. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We yeah, want to be like that. The, uh -huh. but, then, but then the teacher can be anybody. Mm -hmm. Because the message doesn't come from me. The message is given to me. Mm -hmm. Like it's given to anybody else that wants to catch it, to receive it. So you have it, to you know? allow yourself to exactly. be Exactly. You have to be in that position. Yeah. So that's what that's when they say when the uh, student is ready, the uh, the uh, teacher will appear. Mm. That's pretty much the same thing. So now I'm listening to everybody. I see everybody. I, I, I feed from everybody, even my eight-year-old daughter. Because mm -hmm. they always have a message. And it's not from them. When you get that little tiny little like mm -hmm. inkling to do something, it's not you. It's somebody telling you what to do. It's high above, somewhere. Amazing. It truly is. It's wonderful. Um, it would be great not to use any blankets today. Uh, I know. I don't think I'm going to need to. You look like you have pretty good muscle tone. You can yeah. You know, that, that moment I remember uh, uh, very fondly when I was here. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to use those, those blankets. I, yeah. actually, I actually made a video about that. I, I vlog every day. You did. Yeah, so I made a video about it because it was one of those moments when you're uh, when you're reminded of how sick you are. Mm -hmm. So it was one of those days, you know, that that because you you don't see it in yourself. Mm -hmm. You just yeah, that's true. You see yourself on the, uh, on the on the mirror every day, and you don't see those differences that other people see. And when you said you, we, we just can't get it, people said, oh, Do we want to know, though? Sometimes we don't even want to know, right? Well, that's true. we're not ready, or we just, there's problems exactly. that we just can't. We don't want to deal with them, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But see, that's that. the we thing. We don't want to deal with them. When you do deal with them, it opens up so many things. Mm. It, it's, it's wonderful. And, and I think blogging has helped me a lot with that, to... to to be honest with myself, you know, mm -hmm. and to accept it, accept change. Ah. Change that's not even yeah, exactly. you hate the change. Exactly, not the good kind of change. Right. Because we have to be able to reinvent ourselves on a daily basis, you know. How long did your whole surgery take? About 14 hours or so. Oh my God. Yeah, really? something like that. Your family was up there? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. Wow. There were like 30 people waiting for me outside. Really? Yeah, oh it was wonderful. Oh my gosh. And that's, that's, I think that's one of the things that, that keeps me pushing forward all the time. Mm -hmm. So I should have been dead like 21 years ago, that's what they said. Uh -huh. They gave me six months to live like 21 years ago. Really? And, um... Uh, I, I, I told them actually on the 24th of uh, December before Christmas we got together and I told them, you know what, I, I can't give up because, because you guys are there for me and you, you never give up. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just there for me and you, you keep pushing me, so how can I give up, you know? Mm -hmm. And they just said, well, the funny thing, and they all said it, it was weird. They said, well, see, that's the thing. We don't give up because we give each other strength <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> It's like what your daughter was saying. Oh my God, yeah. She has, you didn't know however many years ago that yes. you had more to live yes. for. Yeah. And here you are now. Yeah, so what wonderful. are you doing now? I, you said you're, t you're, you're, you're speaking somewhere? I, I've been doing it for like 10 years now, uh -huh. but I, I never, planned it to become something important in my life, you know, I, I, I just talked about mainly about my, my life story with transplant and all that, and mm -hmm. uh, my, it runs in my family, my condition, so we've lost 17 members of my family to the same How many? 17. 
17. Yes, including my mother when she was 28. Oh. But then I started to think that that maybe somebody out there mm -hmm. would would like to know what I'm going through, and, and maybe they are going through the same thing, and they're thinking that the, they're the only person in the world who's suffering through that. Mm -hmm. And I said, maybe if I start telling my story, uh -huh. it'll help somebody out there, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, little did I know that it was going to help me in the long run, because <laughs> it, it's cathartic. But um, but I started telling my story, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and all that. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell my wife, you know, day that I meet somebody or that somebody sends me a message that, uh, that my life story has helped them out because we're going through the same thing, mm -hmm. it's going to be amazing for me. And it did. It happened. It did? Like three months in, yeah. into it. Really? I got, I got a message from a, a girl in Mexico City, actually. And she was going through the same thing. She was getting paracentesis. Uh, unfortunately, the, the problem with her was that she would never uh, get a heart transplant. Because she wasn't, she wasn't a candidate for it. Uh huh. So, long story short, with her, as I was waiting for my heart, um, at Cedars this time, mm -hmm. I, I, I usually got a message from her like every week or so. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't hear from her from her for like a month or so. And I said, oh, that's weird. And then I got a message from another lady. She said, my name is so and so. I am so and so's mom. I said, oh, this, is, this, doesn't, this doesn't sound good. Oh, oh. And she, yeah, she passed away. Oh, she did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. as, I was, as I was waiting for the heart, she passed away at uh, 21 years old. Oh. So then you start thinking to yourself, why am I here and why mm -hmm. isn't she anymore? So I said, maybe there's something important that I have to do still. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I just pushed on, you know, telling my story from the hospital from mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And uh, it's, it's, it's been amazing. But then you start to think, living with chronic disease, being married for 14 years, being a dad with chronic illness, and then you just keep going. Are we finished? Mm -hmm. okay. You can sit up, sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you keep going from there. There's a lot to talk about. It's not only that, you know. It's not only the uh, the heart and liver transplants. It's it's how do you how do you stay positive all the time? How do you keep Every going? Every day. How do you keep going? And, and for me, it's just a normal thing, you know. I'm just I'm just positive all the time. This is the way I was brought up, I guess. This is the way I was I was supposed to be, pretty much. A lot of people don't have that. And the more I I I, I learn about this the more I know that there's a lot more that I need to do. I don't know how long I'll be here, you know? No one does. Yeah, but but the, the but for if I'm here for one more day, mm -hmm. I'm, I'll do whatever it takes to make somebody else's exactly. life more livable, you know? And, and, and if I can do something for somebody, that's enough for me. I always think to myself that, that some people like, like transplant survivors always think that we're here for a big reason. We're here to change the world. And uh, after many years of thinking about it, I, 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 I thought that maybe it's not, it's not a big thing that we have to do. Maybe I'm just here for 10 years, for, for 10 more years. And then, and then on the 10th day of that 10, 10th year, I'll talk to somebody that day. And maybe I'll say something to that person. And it turns out that that person was going to commit suicide. And maybe then he doesn't, and then he finds a cure for cancer. And that was the, wrong, the right moment that I was here for. Maybe I, I, I was given 10 more years of life, but that tiny little moment, you know, and that keeps me going on a daily basis. That, that tiny little moment in somebody's life.